Hi, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we are going to be looking at how to use JavaScript to search an object of arrays. So there are multiple ways to search through an object of arrays to find the different property values. Okay, there are multiple ways to do that. For example, you can uh, match one of the property values and you can extract the object that contains the value or you can just determine if that particular property value is present in one of the objects in the array and then return true if that's the case. So you can you can do this in different ways. So we'll be looking at a lot of those ways. We'll be looking at uh, looping through an array of objects and, be, and we'll be looking at using for each for that. We'll be looking at using the find method, the find index, the filter method, and so on and so forth. So let's get right into it then. Okay, so loop search array of objects in JavaScript. Right, so to start with, let's loop through an array simple as that okay so looping is a very common way of doing this actually so for example let's say you have an array like this and inside of that you have multiple objects all right and each of these objects have their own properties and values and for this particular example i'm going to have the same because i'm considering that you know it's it's all the same objects with just different values and we're going to get the values of your students okay so a student database so to speak all right so let's say that's my example you can have your example as anything you want so now that i've created one entry what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this and paste it so i can work on the rest of it so the second one is going to be amber her age is going to be 15 all right 15 and her marks are going to be 450 and the next one is going to be let's say susan I've just made this very simple as simple as I can make it so you can you can change it any way you want that's completely up to you all right so now we have our array so now that we have our array we can loop through that so the simplest way of doing that is by using a for loop so you can use a for loop to loop through the array and find the objects so in our example our object has the same property values right so it's an array of objects so it has the same property values it's very easy to do that so just loop through the array by, uh, by using the length property of the array so students dot length would give me the length of that particular array so from zero to the length of it which means zero actually indicates the first entry so until so right before the length means students dot length minus one so three minus one is two so this would be students of two all right so that's how arrays work and then i plus plus when that's the case just go through it and if you can actually look for the property name if students dot i dot name okay now that i i know exactly what i want so in here if if dot name is equal to john in that case i'll do a console dot log of the entire thing so i'll get the entire entry entire student detail i can i can actually print out something from that for example i can i can say john is i can do that why don't i just do that so student dot log in here students of i dot name is students of i dot age years old and scored students of i dot total marks this year all right okay sorry about that i have to just take this off from here uh, so I don't have any errors all right so this is something that I can do so I can do it like this I've created a template string which which basically prints out things in in a proper readable format rather than just the object as it is all right so I can do something like that now I'd like to look at my output but as you can see I have JavaScript practice that's my folder there's an index.html I'll just remove all of these things access and it's 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 actually connected to my script.js it's a very basic HTML file and in my script js i have the current code and also in my visual studio code i have the extensions right here and i've, I've downloaded this live server extension by it big day so i can just go to my html and do a right click and press on open with live server which would open the live server for me 
So this is considered a live development server, which means that you can use this for development purposes. You can use it to look at the output, but in a, it, it's not it's not something that others can see only you can see all right so i think i've made a mistake in here in line number 12 it tells me in, in script or js in line number 12 ah uh, sorry about that all right so it's a students there there was a problem there all right so now i think it's gonna work see i've gotten the exact property i object i wanted and it says john is 16 years old and scored 490 marks uh, this year all right, so that's how you use your for loop to loop through your array of objects. Now let's look at how to do the same with your for each. So I'm just going to take this entire thing right here and use the for each. So students dot for each like this, and let's say for every iteration, it 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 comes and places itself inside of this temporary student element so each of the element is going to have one of these objects okay so that's how for each loops work for each loops loops through the entire array and for every iteration you can create a temporary variable like this which would contain that particular element that it's iterating through at that particular point so in that case i'll just say if student dot name is equal to equal to john in that case please print the same thing that I asked to print out before. All right, so it's, it's going to work exactly the same. Ah, another thing, I've actually made a mistake in here. So for each actually works as a for each actually works like an anonymous arrow function. So students dot for each is actually a method, and inside of that you are sending this as an argument. Okay, so it actually knows what to do. So this is a predefined method. Okay, so here we've created an anonymous arrow function where every iteration this is the argument and then you have your fat arrow and then you have what needs to be done as a form of a function like this within which you have your if condition as well and that's it all right so now if you look at the output you'd see that unfortunately i made a mistake here <laughs> okay hey, i have an error that's because see i told you that student is the one that we need that student is what's gonna be taken into account every time you iterate so for the first iteration student would have this then it will have this then it will have this so every time you're creating an object okay a temporary object so you can just use that student.name to actually access it okay so you can do that and and, and uh, since i didn't do that i've gotten an error so let me just change all of these things so i can get rid of that error and see it says name all of these things and it says john is 16 years old and scored nine, 490 marks this year that's it so that's how you use your for loop and your for each now let's try to use the find method okay so let's let's create an object so for the find method basically we are trying to return something so what would happen is it returns the first occurrence in an array so the find method is mainly used for your arrays so now in our case we have an object so we can use the find method to return the first occurrence of whatever we want inside of the array so let's it actually only returns a copy so in order to do that what you need to do is okay create a new variable like this so you can use the find method on that so students dot find all right sorry it's students dot find it's a predefined method so inside of it you have to give the condition for the find all right so for the condition that is this find will just like your for each method this find will also iterate through your array so every time it iterates let's say we create a dummy variable called student which is going to contain each of the objects of the iteration so every time you have a student right here and i need next i need to give the condition before we actually gave the function right the function where we gave the we had the if condition and all of those things all of that is not needed for your find for your find we know what we're, we're gonna have to find something based on a condition so every time here we'll get the temporary object okay in the temporary variable we'll get the object and in here just give the condition like this is student dot name is equal to equal to john so basically if student dot name is equal to equal to john then get that and place it inside of my object variable 
So now if I do a console.log of this object that I just have, right, I know what I'll find. And since it only returns the first occurrence in an array, for example, instead of student, I'll show you an example later, but let's just finish this off. See, we are getting name, John, all of those things. But since we're only getting first occurrence in here, so for example, if I say age is equal to equal to 16 like this, actually there are two entries where age is equal to 16. There's the John entry and also the Susan entry. But if you refresh, you'll only get the John entry and that's because it only returns the first occurrence of the error. All right. Then what else do we have? Well, we have something called find index as well. So this would return the index okay the index of the occurrence so then you can use that index to find the object if you need to find it so how do you do that so you just use find index in here and for every iteration you can give the condition where basically the student let's say in our example in this particular example student dot name is actually susan okay so that's that's the example that we're giving in here so in here we have we'll get the index in here so i'll, I'll create a separate index variable in here so this would have the index so susan is 0 1 2 so essentially 2 would be the value inside of your index and here you can just access it based on that so students of index like this so if you look at the output right now see you have the susan 1 because students of 2 is this particular object right all right so now we have our filter okay so in filter Filter basically returns all the objects. In here it's objects or, or you can uh, say the elements of the array, all the array elements. Uh, but here the array elements are objects. So that's why I'm, I'm mentioning it as objects. So essentially it just returns all the array elements that pass the condition. So before when we used find or find index, it just returned the first instance of it. That's, that's good. Yes. But sometimes you want all of them, right? All of them in a separate array. So now you can actually do that. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this result because this is going to be the result array. And here, instead of find index, I'm going to change this to filter. Okay, so filter works similar to find actually. So it, it iterates through the array and every time you get you get that particular element of that particular iteration placed inside of the dummy variable that you have here, which is student. You can name this anything you want actually. And here you have to give the condition of the filtration just like before. So now let's say student dot age is equal to equal to 16. And that's my condition because I know that there are more than one objects for this particular condition. And in here, let me just print out the result like this. Right. So now if you look at the output, you'll see that C, we don't just have one like we had before when we used find. We have two where the first one is your John object and the second one is the susan object and we have a completely new array created which can be worked on later so you can loop through this particular array later on by using the for each and things like that for example i can do that why don't we do that so result dot for each would be right student uh actually you know why don't i just make it uh, or in it since it's just a temporary variable i can make the student it's still fine so i'll just say i'll just say right you know for every single thing i'll just do a console.log of student dot name that's it so now i've just iterated through that so john and susan i got it all right so you can do stuff like that all right so that's how you actually search through an array of objects there, these are the multiple ways we've used to do this so i really hope you like this tutorial and if you do please like the video and please subscribe and when you subscribe press on the bell button so you get notifications whenever i post a new video i'll be posting videos every single day and i post a lot of these kind of question question answer type videos that are very helpful for interviews and if you for in general for building your javascript and your web development knowledge and i'll also be posting videos on all the web development topics python artificial intelligence and machine learning and things like that so as the channel expands i'll be posting a lot of those videos as well and i'll also focus on project type videos small project type videos and mini courses on popular programming topics as well but you can also give me your recommendations you can you can 
type things out on the comments and i'll take that into account as well and if you have any doubts please ask them i'll try my best to answer as many comments as i can so that's it i'll see you on the other side thank you